What's going on YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor. Today we're going to finish up on timers. Our last video we looked at TON timers and today we're going to look at TOF timers and RTO, the timer off delay and the retentive timer on delay. The best way to describe these is for me just to do a program to show you the different tags and what the tags do based on an output. I've started with my same emulate program that I had before, so if you need to learn how to use emulate, I've got a video for that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bit to start my timer. Now, we did TONs before. Today we're going to look at a TOF first. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to have three rungs because I'm going to look at a bit off each instruction of my timer. So for this first bit, what I want to do is create a bit that actually starts the timer based on input zero down here. So I'll alias this, look at our channel three input, and then we'll go to zero. So when I push this button, it's going to start my timer. Now, remember, in order to create a tag for a timer, all we're going to do is right click this question mark and go to new tag and timer tag should be base. So I'm just going to call this T1, hit create. Now you notice now I've got a preset and accumulator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this for five seconds because our timer values are in milliseconds. Then I'm going to come down here and we're going to look at our three bits that we looked at in our TON. I'm going to look at my enable bit, I'm going to look at my timer timing bit, and then my done bit. So all you have to do is double click the question mark, find your T1, and open this tag up. And then down below we've got our three bits that we're going to look at. So this first one is our enable bit. The second one is the timer timing bit. And the third is our done bit. Now we're going to run this and we're going to see how this timer operates based on these bits. Okay, so let's, we'll just call this en underscore light and we'll alias that for our output. Do output zero for that. And then we'll call this our tt underscore light. We'll alias that for our next output on our emulator. And then finally, we'll have our done light that we will alias on output two. Okay, now you notice there's no red X's. That means that, that everything has been tagged correctly and we can download this now to our emulator. So I've already established a pathway or communication with this emulator with the TON timer. So all I have to do now is select download. And yes, we want to change back into run mode. And then down here, you'll see my inputs and outputs. So in order to start this timer, I'm going to hit zero. Now whenever I enable zero, notice what happens. So my accumulator value is the preset it's set at 5000. My enable light will come on as long every time this comes on. That's true for all the timers. But with the TON, as soon as I press this, it starts timing. Whenever I press this for the TOF, watch what happens here and then watch my done light. So remember the TON, basically what happens is when I press this at times for five seconds, this comes on for five seconds. Once it's off, my done bit comes on as long as my timer is enabled. Watch this. I turn this on. Now look what happens. My enable bit is high. Remember that's always going to follow this, but my done bit automatically comes on. And my done bit is going to stay on. This is what we use mostly with this TOF bit is our done bit because watch what happens whenever I disable this channel. Notice I'm not timing. Now when I turn my input off, 
it times, my TT light comes on for five seconds, my dumb bit is still on until after five seconds. Let's watch this operate one more time. It's on, stays on. When I go off, it times for five seconds. And then after that five seconds, they both go off. Now, when would you use this in industry? Well, one example is possibly if you've got, let's say, a large motor that has a cooling system that needs to continue to operate that cooling system so many minutes or whatever after the motor kicks off. Okay, you would use a TOF in that case because let's say that our motor kicks on our motor's running, our cooling system kicks on. So let's say that this done bit is going to our cooling system, our cooling motor, circulating motor. As long as that motor is running, we're circulating coolant to cool that motor. But when you turn that off, that motor's still hot and you might need to circulate that coolant for so long. And so when your motor shuts off, our coolant motor is still operating even though our motor shut off for a certain amount of time and then it shuts off. So that's just an example of how this works. Okay, now, so that's a TOF. Let me go offline a second, and we're going to change this to an RTO. Okay, so RTO is retentive timer on delay. So our RTO operates just like our on delay with one exception. If you have an instruction in control logics and you want to change that instruction, all you have to do is double click the instruction name, select this down arrow, and you can change the instruction. So if I want to change that TON back or TOF back to a TON, I can do it there. And it automatically keeps all my tags associated with that, and I don't have to change anything else in the program. What we want to do is we want to select an RTO though. Okay, now I've got an RTO. My accumulator is at zero. Now I'm going to re-download this. Okay, now, watch what happens now. I'm going to push the same button. Watch our enable. Now, this is going to act just like a timer on delay. So what's going to happen whenever I enable this timer, our TT is going to time as long as our timer's timing, and our enable bit is like all the rest of them are going to follow this start. But with one exception. Let's say that I push this for two seconds. I let off. Notice what happens it holds our accumulator value. That's why it's called a retentive timer on delay. Notice our enable bit followed this. Our timer timing bit was on for that two seconds, but it went off. So if I continue on for another second, notice that timer timing bit came back on enable bit. They're gonna follow each other until my accumulator value equals my preset. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that continue out. Now, notice what happens, just like an on delay. My enable bit's still high, my done bit's high, but watch what happens now. I'm holding my done bit high now without power. And the reason for that is because I've got a retentive value here that I'm holding inside my accumulator. It does not reset whenever the input goes low just like the TON and TOF does. As a matter of fact, it doesn't reset at all and that's a problem that we have. So what we need to do is we need to add a reset to manually reset this accumulator. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a XIC and then underneath timers and counters, the last thing is a reset. Okay, so let's do a new tag here. We'll call this reset and we'll alias this for our second input. input one. Okay, now whenever I push one, it's going to reset my value here. All right, now what do you think we need to, everything has to have a tag here, so what do you think we're going to tag to reset this timer? Well, I would think you would want to select timer one accumulator, right, because that's what we're actually resetting, but actually you have to select the whole timer tag, and there's two ways of doing this. You can double click this question mark, and find your timer tag and just select that or you can pull down your tag here select pull this tag down until that turns green and let go and now we're resetting our timer all right so let's let's download that again and let's watch this operate now okay 
we're going to do our timer. We'll do it for about half the time. There you see it it holds that accumulator value. We're going to go up the rest of the time. TT is timing. Now we get a done bit. We go low for an input. It holds that value, holds that done bit until we hit our reset. Notice my reset is high. My accumulator went back to zero. So when would you use an RTO in industry? Well, one example for this possibly might be in a shift, you might want to keep up with your downtime. And so every time a line goes down, you might want to count uh, for accumulated value and then hold that your, once your line goes back up, but you still need your total time. And so you hold that value until the next time it goes down. And then it would start counting right from the moment it left off. So that's an example of where you might use an RTO in industry. All right, so this is how we use TOFs and RTOs in control logics. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below. I hope this has helped you out, and I will see you all next time.